everybody. Uh, so something unexpected happened uh, yesterday. Uh, we got the announcement of a Nintendo Direct, which is pretty great because we haven't had one since the spring. And so this was a really bombshell Direct, so let's just get really into my thoughts and opinions on what was announced. So we'll start with the big headliner here. So you, they started off with the newest installment of Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem Engage, which uh, looks pretty interesting. I'm not super into Fire Emblem, but it looks really cool. Uh, I love seeing Marth because I'm a Smash stan. I uh, love seeing Marth, so I might check it out. Uh, you guys will have to let me know if you're interested in that. Um, they went right into the headlines then. It Takes Two is coming to the Switch. Uh, I'm really interested in playing that. I saw a video on it. And it looked interesting. It's like a co-op, but it's only two player, so it might be a fun one to play. Uh, some other stuff. They really hit it hard with the headlines at the beginning. Next is Fatal Frame, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, which looked really creepy. I'm not super interested in those kind of games, but um, hey, if you are, you are. Uh, after that, the Wave 2 of Xenoblade 3 DLC, which I'm going to be honest, Xenoblade 3 looks pretty sweet. I've heard some really good things about it. So it's nice to see that they're uh, getting more DLC. Uh, the character they announced looks pretty OP. Uh, I've never played it, but looks OP. Um, then they had a little like snippet of fast little games, which was SpongeBob SquarePants The Cosmic Shake. Okay, I guess. Fitness Boxing. Um, so if you remember that really obscure boxing game that came out a few years ago, um, now they made an adventure game out of it. Weird. Oddballers and Tunic. Not super interesting, but I mean if you're into that stuff. Alright, after that they believe they did their next spotlight, which was Octopath Traveler 2. Uh, I didn't know they needed a sequel to this game. Uh, it looks really beautiful. Like, I love the 2D HD style of graphics. Definitely looks really cool. I might try it. I've been looking into Octopath Traveler and Triangle Strategy, so... You know, it looks pretty cool. Alright, let's get into some more of the headlines that they did. Um, Front Mission Remakes... Sure, I I've never heard of it. Uh, lots, I'm just gonna put forewarning out there for you guys. Lots and lots of farming sim games. I mean, everything that wasn't a first party IP was a farming simulator, which was kind of annoying because I'm sitting there watching and I'm expecting, you know, explosions and stuff like that. And, you know, farming simulator. Well, I mean, I guess. Uh, a Wonderful Life in Forgotten Valley. Sure. Well, that's not the name of the game. <laughs> Story of Seasons. That's what it is. Sure, I guess. I thought Doraemon was in it when I first saw it, and I'm like, oh, that's a different game. Uh, something really exciting after that happened. Uh, the first post-launch Splatfest for Splatoon 3 was confirmed. Which I am really, really excited about, because... I have really enjoyed Spl I'm really enjoying Splatoon 3 and I'd love to hop into a Splatfest. I didn't get a chance to play the world premiere Splatfest, so to get into this one, I totally forgot what the teams were, but I'm going to pick Oh no, here, I remember. Gear, uh, fun and food for what would you bring on a desert island? Uh, I will be 100% picking gear, so if you feel like joining my team on Team Gear, uh, September 23rd through the 25th, go represent Team Gear. After that, they had Fairy Tale Life in Fay Farm. Again, another farming sim. Kinda just, you know, turned my eyes off for that moment. <laughs> uh, next one is really interesting, which. Uh, I'm going to also state something. This was not a Nintendo Direct. This was a Square Enix Direct. Because Square Enix felt the need to have 50 billion different games in the Nintendo Direct. 
but uh, their first big game is the Final Fantasy Rhythm game, which celebrates the 35th anniversary of Final Fantasy, which I thought was really interesting because um, I like the music from Final Fantasy a lot. I have yet to got the chance to play Kingdom Hearts uh, Melody of Memory, but looks fun. You just, you know, jam out to the music of the series. I love the music of the series, so I will be checking that one out. Maybe do some gameplay footage on it. Not gonna lie, pretty hyped. Um, after that, they had another big one, uh, Mario. The next Mario plus Rabbids, the Sparks of Hope. That got a new trailer. Well, I wouldn't say new trailer, more like an overview trailer of because it's coming out really soon. Uh, so probably gonna check that one out. Uh, I love what they've done with Mario and Rabbids. I think it's a really interesting concept throwing Mario and these crazy rabbits in a turn-based RPG. Really cool, really enjoyed the first game. Uh, down to play this next one. Uh, then Rune Factory 3, which I guess is a big deal. I, I mean, I guess. Uh, after that, we got some Switch Online news uh, for the 64 Online. Uh, they announced a whole bunch of new games coming from now until, I believe, next year. So we got Mario Party, Mario Party 2, and Mario Party 3. So they got, like, all the Mario Parties on the Switch Online now. Pretty hyped. I've heard those are the best. Uh, then they went into some sports games. Uh, Excite Bike 64. Sure. Uh, 1080 uh, Snowboarding, which looks pretty neat. I've heard of the GameCube one, forgot it was an N64 game, and uh, Pilot Wing 64, sure, cool, and then um, the real bombshell, Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Stadium 2, which I am pretty excited about because I, I, I do like Pokemon, and I think these are cool. They are quite expensive now, so to get them like in this digital format, really neat, uh, and then you know, they announced the games and stuff, and then after they were like, but we have one more game to announce. And then the James Bond theme starts playing. GoldenEye 007 is coming to the Switch. I cannot wait. It's like my second favorite Nintendo 64 game. It's so good. I'm so... It's crazy that they did this, honestly. Can't wait, can't wait. Um, yeah, so after that, they did another little slideshow thing with the announcement of this game, Various Day Life. Uh, it has the same font style as Octopath and Triangle Strategy, so I have to believe it's in that sub-series. Uh, Factor... Factorio? <laughs> I guess is that the name of it. Um, looks really cool. I like the art style and the idea of it, so I probably would check that one out. Ib which looked really creepy, uh, kind of like Undertale if it was darker. So yeah, that's Ib. <laughs> and then the next update for Mario Strikers Battle League, which introduces Pauline and Diddy Kong. I have yet to play Battle League, but I heard it was the gameplay was good. It was just lacking on the content, so I didn't pick it up. Maybe when they're done with all the characters, I'll pick it up and check it out. All right. So uh, their, set, their next spotlight, per se, uh, Koizumi-san brought up Miyamoto to talk about what we thought was going to be the Mario movie, but it was actually Pikmin Bloom. Believe it or not, Pikmin Bloom, that one app game that is like Pokemon Go, but worse. Uh, but after he talked about that for like two minutes, uh, po Pikmin 4, which is crazy because... Pikmin seemed kind of dead for a while. I'm glad it's not, because I do know some people who will be excited for this, but I'm down. <laughs> Pikmin 4, sure. I'll play 2 and 3 and 1 before, but you know, it looked really beautiful when they showed the opening cinematic of it. Uh, the graphics looked phenomenal, especially for the Switch. So, good on Nintendo. Let's go. Better graphics. 
Um, after that, Atelier Ryza. Once again, anime game. I'd never heard of it. Sure. I, if you're into that, I mean, go for it. Go for it if you're into it. Uh, then they had something pretty awesome, a sneak peek at Wave 3 of Mario Kart 8 Booster Pass, which was really exciting because they've been kind of mysterious about it. They kind of just dropped a trailer for the Wave 2, but we actually get like a sneak peek and like a release window of uh, the Mario Kart 8 tracks. They showed Tour Merry Mountain, which is a bop. That, that's a good track. And uh, DS Peach Gardens, which I know is a fan favorite, is really cool to see in HD. Both really cool to see on the Switch with the new graphics palette. I know they're not up to snuff, but they looked really good. After that, we finally got something on the Nintendo Switch Sports update that they told us was coming out when the game came out and then proceeded to tell us nothing about. Um... They're adding golf, which we knew, and they pushed the release window back to winter of this year. So probably around like November or December. Kind of bummed about that because I was really excited to play golf. Something to get me back in the game, but it looks really fun. They brought back all the Wii Sports courses so you can have some good old times on the good old classics. Uh, after that, Just Dance. Um, Just Dance is kind of an inevitable thing, much like Madden and FIFA and 2K20 or whatever they're on now. Uh, they're calling it, something I noticed is with a lot of Ubisoft games, they're putting a Ubisoft original before the title. I think that's interesting. And then they're calling it Just Dance 2023 Edition. So, not really sure what they're doing with that, like, setting up-wise, but... Maybe they're just going to, like, release a Just Dance game and then do additions for different years. I mean, sure. That's, that's That's an idea. I know they're moving more towards a season pass thing with Just Dance. It's like the playlist, but... Uh, next up, Harvestella. Once again, a farming sim anime game. For all you simps out there, go for it. Uh, next up was kind of big for some people, not really super big for me, because I'm not into this stuff, but Bayonetta 3. Uh, that looked really stylish, would you say? I'm not into Bayonetta or anything in that, like, sub-series, uh, so, but I know lots of people have been hyped for that, so, inter- good to see some more stuff on that, um, Rain code had me very confused. I don't understand this. You're like a detective in this rainy city, but like you've got this crazy chick following you. I don't know, I didn't get it. But it's made by the people who did Dongan Rampa, which has gotten like a whole bunch of installments, so it must be interesting. And then I'm really disappointed about this. Um Resident Evil is a game series that has been going on since the 90s. They just had their Resident Evil Village come out, I believe, last year, beginning of this year. And they've, they're have they finally putting it on Switch, but it's the cloud version. Now, guys, I'm all about cloud from Final Fantasy VII. Don't get me wrong, but cloud versions of games are lame. They put the Cloud Kingdom Hearts games on this machine, and they suck. So, Cloud Resident Evil, probably gonna suck as well, unless Capcom is willing to put resources into good uh, servers. It will most likely suck. But I've heard some decent things about Village, and it looks like they're also putting uh, Biohazard... Evil, Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3, all cloud, all cloud, um, but yeah, it's good to see the Switch has like every Resident Evil ever made on it. Uh, they had another little snippet of games, Sifu, 
don't get it. Uh, it looked really neat. I thought the mechanic of every time you die you get old was really neat. And maybe some more games need to take that approach, but uh, sure. And then Endless Dungeon, which my brother called a Enter the Gungeon ripoff because it was basically that. Um, yeah, that's what it is. And then the the best part of this little like snippet that they had uh, was Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. Now, if you guys paid attention at all to the 25th anniversary stream they did, Square Enix did a few months ago, they announced this, that it's coming to Switch and all that, but it's good to see Nintendo, you know, representing the Final Fantasy. That's why I said this is a Square Enix Direct. There have been like seven Square Enix games already, and we're not even done. Uh, but I am really excited to check out Crisis Core. Probably won't on the Switch, just because the rest of the Final Fantasy VII remake stuff is on PlayStation, so I'll probably just do it on there. But really nice to see it coming to Switch. Alright, after that, they had the Tales of Symphonia Remaster, which is really interesting because it's a really niche GameCube game. I know Tale the Tales series has been going on for a while, but uh, I recently picked up the GameCube game. It looks really neat. I uh, played a little bit of it. Really good. Um, great to see that it's getting an HD remaster on the Switch. Uh, that's something I was thinking about this morning, actually, when I woke up. I was like, huh. Remember Tales of Symphonia? Wouldn't it be cool if they did like an HD version of it? And so we're getting HD Tales of Symphonia remastered. So really interesting. Really cool. Uh, they also did another snippet. <laughs> Funny. Uh, this one, I believe, had no um, no voicing, so this is like the run-through of smaller, smaller free games on the platform. Uh, Life is Strange, Arcadia Bay Collection, Square Enix, uh, Romancing Saga, uh, Square Enix, <laughs> um, Lego Brick Tales. I mean, I like Lego. Lego games are always good, so let's get another one. Disney Speedstorm, which I don't get why there needs to be another racing game, and it's a free racing game, so it will probably be riddled with microtransactions, but I mean, sure, I do think that Mike and Sully should have gotten outfits for Kingdom Hearts 3, and not this game, but okay. And then Fall Guys, which was on Switch, they just showed Season 2. Alright, the last big announcement they did before their final announcement. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe heads to the Switch. Uh, apparently this was like the best Kirby on the Wii or something. I also heard Epic Yarn was good. Um, but really interesting to see this here. I wasn't expecting a Kirby because it's been like what, six months since Forgotten Land came out? I wasn't expecting a, such a short turnover for Kirby games, but I mean, hey, there's a niche out there, I guess. Uh, but really, really hyped to see, I know Return to Dreamland was kind of a return to format for Kirby, and so super psyched it's coming on Switch. Apparently it's Kirby's 35th this year? Must be. And then, oh boy, oh boy, to top it all off, to end this Square Enix Direct, we got The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. The sequel to Breath of the Wild has a name now, now, guys. Did you hear that? A name. It looks sick. They only showed about, like, six seconds of a trailer of some neat ancient ruins. I'm gonna go in-depth on this, because I love Zelda. But they showed some ancient ruins, some soft piano, and then Link just busts open this giant door and starts running and skydiving. You know, you know, things have gotten real serious after that. Uh, so, really excited to see. I'm so glad they have a name. I'm done calling it Breath of the Wild 2. I needed a name. Tears of the Kingdom. The logo looks sick. Whatever green dragon ancient thing they have behind the logo 
is awesome. And I love how the Master Sword, like, gets super funky at the bottom. So, neat. And a release day. A release day I cannot wait. May 12th, 2023. It's coming. I'm so hyped. Uh, that was it for this Nintendo Direct. I know some thought it wasn't very good. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, this is something that should have happened in June, but I mean, guess was pushed to September. You know, fall hype. Uh, so yeah, let me know your thoughts and comments down below. I'd love to hear your opinions. And if you want me to play any of, the, of these games, just not Fatal Frame or the Ib. I don't like scary games. Uh, so don't recommend any of those, but anything else I'm totally opening to play, open to playing. Uh, but yeah, so this has been lots of fun. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, uh, turn on notifications so you never miss when I post because I have a really strange upload schedule. Um, I've been King from Kingdom Studios. Uh, have